are joined now by the aforementioned mansion part of that uh, Joe Mansion. Joseph, good morning to you. Did you just refer to me as Joe Manchin? <laughs> he did. Oh, my goodness, Joe Ferretti. Yeah. Hey, you're listening, Joe. You, you know what, though? How would you like to be a U.S. senator? Uh, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. He's Italian. You're Italian. Why not? Let's share the wealth. I qualify. I yeah. qualify then. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Joe, let's, let's spend a little bit of time on two different subjects. One, the state Supreme Court is hearing a case involving the future of charter schools in West Virginia. Yeah, though this one is on a bit of a of a different footing than some of the previous discussions that have taken place. And I also ask you about First Amendment rights and the situation with the city of Martinsburg PD. But first, let's get to the uh, state Supreme Court and the legal battle about West Virginia charter schools. Yeah, let, let's save uh, flipping off the cops to last. Uh, <laughs> Indeed. Um, the, <laughs> the, well, yeah, remember the Hope Scholarship Challenge uh, went through the courts and the court ultimately decided uh, in Charleston that that was okay. So this challenge has to do with the fact that we have a constitutional provision uh, directing how school districts can be established in the state of West Virginia. And the challenge here is that uh, the legislature overstepped the bounds of the Constitution by creating this professional charter school board. And remember that they did that when uh, initially under the 2019 law in West Virginia, where the voters of the counties had a say on whether charter schools could be developed or not in their counties, uh, Mon and Preston County voted down a charter school in that area of the state. So the legislature went back to the lab and said, okay, how are we going to get these through? So they've created this professional charter school board, which is now the authorizing entity for establishing charter schools in the state of West Virginia. The challenge here is that, well, you can't do that because the Constitution expressly states that schools can only be created within a district by a, a vote of the voters in that district. And there's no voting taking place here, either by school boards or the public at large. The public charter school board is now the authorizing agent for establishing these charter schools. So that's the issue before the Supreme Court, and that was what was argued yesterday before the justices. What do you think of the case, Joe? Well, I, I think it's going to come down, I think, to – And I, by the way, I think uh, my prediction is the Supreme Court is going to uphold the, uh, the legislation that established the Professional Charter School Board. I think there's a uh, – uh, you know, you can – couple of justices right now, I think, are automatic yes votes on that. And I think uh, uh, it'll be a 3-2-4-1 vote uh, at a minimum in favor. Uh, if you read the Constitution literally, uh, you know, you could argue, well, you know, the, this is all by the consent of, of the voters that we establish schools in the state of West Virginia. However, the argument that's being made is an interpretation of that provision, which is that this is from a bygone era. Back in the day, West Virginia did have townships, and it was the townships that established schools in the various counties throughout the state. And the constitutional provision was really a prohibition from the legislature stepping in and establishing school districts where the local townships and the voters in those townships did not want them. And so the argument is that this is really an arcane constitutional provision that really doesn't address what's happening here. We're not establishing new school districts. We're really establishing a school district within a school district. Uh, and in some cases, there's an overlay where a charter school would be pulling students from even more than one district. But we're not carving out a separate school district and drawing lines. And so that is the argument I think that's ultimately going to prevail. Bill? Yeah. Uh, so they, I heard and knew they had the hearing, uh, hearings yesterday. How long do you think it'll be before the judges make a decision? Uh, typically, and after oral argument, uh, you, you know, you're going to get a decision within a couple months. Uh, I suspect, uh, you know, the term of court ends in, I believe, July would not surprise me if, a, if an opinion comes out before then. Now, this would be a terminal decision, will it not? In other words, can this be referred to the U.S. Supreme Court? 
No, I think this is as far as it's going to go because it really involves a state constitutional question, not a federal. Anish. Now, Joe, is, is so what happens if it goes the other way? So if, if um, let's say, the Supreme Court rules uh, in favor of the, um, the, the party that's bringing this forth, does that mean that the charter schools that are set up currently in West Virginia – will have to shut down and then the state legislature is going to go back to the drawing board or do you know what the implications are on that end? Yeah, I, I would imagine that if the Supreme Court decides that the Constitution does not allow for the operation of this professional charter school board in authorizing the establishment of schools, that what, what has happened so far would be invalidated. And recall that uh, at the circuit court level, and this was brought in, in the Canal County Circuit Court level, the judge there granted a preliminary injunction ruling that the party, uh, and it was two teachers who had filed the uh, suit, the parties challenging the establishment of this professional charter school board would likely prevail, which is the standard for, for granting a preliminary injunction. The Supreme Court then stepped in and stayed that injunction and invited uh, this this oral argument to be held here that was held yesterday. But, uh, yeah, I think it would call into question everything that's been established so far in terms of charter schools in West Virginia. And I think we have three brick-and-mortar schools and two online schools presently. Yeah, Joe, so this this is the, the court decision is not going to be on the merits of the charter school. It's going to be on the way they were appointed or the way they were established. Is that correct? It's, going to, it's right. It, it, it's a, a mechanical question, I guess, in terms of how the legislature has gone about creating an independent school board that has the authority to step forward and establish schools. Um, and, and so that, it, that the court is simply looking at the mechanics that were developed in the legislation uh, authorizing the school board to, to be developed and exist and, and operate. And uh, uh, But, yeah, if the case goes against the legislature on this and, and the current law, uh, it's back to square one. And going back to square one, one alternative would be have a referendum in every county or every every school district. Is that correct? Right. And, yeah. and, and, right. and, and the reason why the legislature, of course, uh, responded to the Mon and Preston County uh, in, you know, voting down charter schools was, was the reason we're in this case to begin with it. They, I think they anticipated that in many jurisdictions in West Virginia, charter schools would not pass the vote. Joe, four minutes left. Let's get into this situation with the city of Martinsburg PD and an apparent free speech issue. Yeah, interesting. And I understand that the individual locally spent a couple of days in jail after being accused of flipping off the uh, the officer, uh, you know, the, the hand gesture that we're all familiar with. Uh, I, I did a little research on this, Rob, and, and, and clearly this is not the first instance of this happening. Uh, police, as, as we know, uh, uh, in many cases, very wrongly, uh, are the subject of abuse and, and getting flipped off and getting yelled at and obscenities and all that. And we know that, that our police officers are, are pretty much trained to take it. Uh, and not respond to that because it is a free speech issue. Many court cases throughout the country have this, have come down on the rights of the individuals to express themselves, uh, even in the face of, of an officer uh, with a hand gesture or obscenities or whatever. You can cross the line, however, uh, and some courts have upheld charges of disorderly conduct or breach of the peace if the obscenities or, or the hand gestures were done in a crowded area with others present because then the concern is, uh, and it's a public policy concern, the safety of the officers are now being put at risk if there are certain confrontations that take place with others present. And uh, we only have to look at January 6th to, to see what happened there. I'm going to make Larry Schultz real happy here. But if <laughs> in January 6th, uh, there, the, the officers on the Capitol Mall were confronted and there was a lot of obscenities and hand gestures and threats made. And then that devolved into violence uh, because, you know, people's emotions get stoked. So 
in a case like this, if you do a hand gesture or shout obscenities at an officer and others are present, you can be lawfully arrested and charged and convicted. And the public policy would be that you're breaching the peace and you're threatening the officer beyond just your ordinary one-on-one confrontation with the officer that might take place because others are present and others could join in and uh, and create a situation that is untenable for the officer. Interesting distinction you make there, Joe. I appreciate you taking the time to research that. But in this particular situation, the individual appeared to be pretty much alone. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that would indicate yeah. otherwise yeah. then. Yeah, and, and, and if it goes through the court system, uh, that is most likely going to be deemed a free speech situation, and uh, and it's really not actionable as uh, as a charge of a crime. Joe, I appreciate your time on the uh, issue today. We'll talk to you again Friday morning. Okay, fellas.